Now it's going to be helpful in thinking about scientific notation to talk about this very closely related idea of significant digits. Now to understand what this idea is all about, it's important to remember that almost all of the numbers we meet in day-to-day -day life are rounded. In order to see this idea, let me tell you a story about Alice. And in particular, this story is about Alice's height. And because talking about rounding in the US system is such a mess, I'm going to use the metric system in this story. So Alice is having a conversation with her friends. And they ask each other how tall they are. And Alice says that she's 160 centimeters tall. What she really means is she's 160 centimeters tall when she rounds to the nearest 10 centimeters. She doesn't want to get more precise than that since it's just a casual conversation. We know that someone who's 170 centimeters tall is taller, someone who's 150 centimeters tall is shorter, and Someone, who, someone else who says 160 centimeters is about the same height as Alice is. But later on, Alice goes to the doctor's office, and the doctor asks Alice for her height. Now, the doctor is going to use her height to calculate information about her health, so she wants to be a little bit more precise. So she tells the doctor that she's 163 centimeters tall. Now, instead of rounding her height to the nearest 10 centimeters, she's just rounded it to the nearest 1 centimeter. That doesn't mean that she was lying to her friends, right? If you take that 163 centimeters, round it to the nearest 10, you get the 160 centimeters she told her friends. She's just being more precise, more specific. Now, later on still, Alice reads something on the internet that says that her height changes during the month because of the gravity of the moon. She doesn't really believe that. She decides to go all Mythbusters on it. So she carefully measures her height at the same time every day and discovers that every day, regardless of where the moon is, her height is 162.8 centimeters. Now she's not rounding to the nearest whole centimeter. Now she's rounding to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. So Alice goes back to the internet, and she's talking on forums about measuring her height really carefully. And she finds a spiffy laser height measuring device on Kickstarter. And when the funky laser height measuring device from Kickstarter arrives in the mail, she measures her height again. And she finds that her height, according to the laser height measuring device, is 162.803 centimeters. So that's rounding to the nearest 0 .001 centimeter. And even that is probably not her true exact height. That's really, really close, right? But if she measured it to the nearest millionth of a centimeter, she would probably get a number that's still slightly different from that. So what's the actual value of Alice's height? Well, in fact, Alice's true height is all of these things. All of these answers are reporting the same height, but at different levels of precision. The precision of a number is a measure of how much information is conveyed. And there are two different ways to think about precision. One way is the way that I've done it here. One way we could think about the precision of a number is by asking, well, what was the place that we rounded off to? Another way to think about the precision of a number, however, is to ask, 
how much information does it give us? What do I mean by that? How much information do we have? Well, let me give you three different numbers. 17,500, 175, or point zero zero one seven five. The thing to notice about these numbers is that all three of these numbers talk about 175 of something. The first one is 175 hundreds. The second is 175 units. And the third, it's a little bit tricky, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths. The third number tells us about 175 hundred thousandths. So these are all rounded to different places, right? This has been rounded to the hundreds place, presumably. This has been rounded to the ones place. And this has been rounded to the hundred thousandths place. But they all have the same amount of information. They all have a three-digit number worth of information. The way that we describe that is by saying that they have three significant digits. Three significant digits. Hmm. What does that mean? It means that three of the digits in this number are significant, as opposed to what? A digit is either significant or a placeholder. These zeros here that are just telling us that we have hundreds, or these zeros here that are just telling us that we have hundred thousand. Those are just placeholders. Let's talk a little bit more about how to determine whether or not a digit is significant. First, let's talk about the most significant digit. The most significant digit is the leftmost non-zero digit. So non-zero, that literally just means anything but zero. In each of these numbers, notice, the most significant digit is this one. Why is that most significant? Because changing the most significant digit produces the largest possible change in the number. Right, so what do I mean? If I were to change 175 to 275, that would be a much bigger change than changing 175 to 176. Okay. Hmm. So that's why we call that first non-zero digit the most significant digit. Because getting that wrong makes us super wrong about the number. There's also a least significant digit. Now, usually, the least significant digit is the rightmost non-zero digit. That's the case in all of these numbers. All right, so in each of these, the five is the least significant digit for the same reason. Right, changing 175 to 176 is a very, very small change indeed. Okay, but I said something weird. I said usually. Let, let me explain why. Let me give you an example of a number. Consider the number 299.99. I'm going to take this number and I'm going to round it. I'm going to round it in four different ways. To the nearest tenth. Well, this is a nine. Next digit is a nine. So I'm going to round up, and I'm going to get 300.0. 
I'm going to round it to the whole number. Here's a 9, and the next digit is a 9. I'm going to get 300. I'm going to round it to the nearest 10. Next digit's still a 9. I get 300 again. In fact, if I round it to the nearest 100, I still get 300. Right? And yet, I want to give more information depending on what place I rounded it to. This one gives four digits worth of information. It just happens to be the four-digit number that is a three followed by three zeros. This number gives three digits of information. This number gives two, and this number only gives one. How the heck can I tell? Well, I do a trick. In this number, I put in a decimal point. This number I'll have a trick to deal with later. And this number I leave alone. All right, so I'm going to modify my rule for the least significant digit. Instead of saying it's the rightmost non-zero digit, if there's a decimal point, it's the rightmost digit, zero or not. Why? Well, check it out. This zero, I could have not written it without changing the number. The only reason I would have written in that zero is to tell you that it's significant. This number, I could have not written in that decimal point without changing anything. The only reason I would have written it in is to tell you that that last zero is significant. Okay, so now that we know about the most significant digit and the least significant digit, we can say what the significant digits are. In any number, the most significant digit, the least significant digit, and any digits in between are significant. Any other digits, because of how we found the most and least significant, any other digits must be zeros, and they're all placeholders. So let me give you a couple of examples. In 22,070,000, no decimal point. So the least significant digit is this 7. The most significant digit is this 2. And then there are these two digits in between. And so 1, 2, 3, 4, there are four significant digits. Point zero, zero, 0073. The most significant digit, the leftmost non-zero digit is this 7. There's a decimal point, so the least significant digit is the rightmost digit at all. Nothing in between. So this number has two significant digits. One more, 0 0.00400. 0 the most significant digit is this four, right? Leftmost non-zero. The least significant digit, there's a decimal point. So the least significant digit is just the last digit overall. And then there's one digit in between. This is three significant digits. One of the most useful things about significant digits is that we can include them in rounding instructions. So we might say, for example, calculate 77,000 divided by 9.8 and round your answer to two significant digits. How do we do that? Well, let's use our calculator. We'll take 77,000, oops, three zeros, divided by 9.8. Okay, so the calculator gives us 7,857 point a bunch of stuff. I want to round to two significant digits. 
My most significant digit is the 7. If I want to get two significant digits, my least significant digit is going to have to be that next digit. And then I'll have one, two significant digits. So I want to round to that next place. Digit after that's a 5, so I'm going to round up. I get 7,900 when I round to two significant digits. Just for the sake of an example, I'm going to do one more like this. I'm going to calculate 1.11 to the negative 27th power and round my answer to three significant digits. Wow, am I glad I'm not doing this by hand. So I take 1.11 to the negative 27th power equals, so the calculator says 0 0.0597400. Six blah blah blah. Right, I think I can actually see the repeating pattern here, but I'm being asked to round. So, three significant digits. My most significant digit is this five. If I want three significant digits, one, two, three. My least significant digit is going to have to be in this place. Right, and then I'll have those three places for my significant digits. Hmm. My next digit is a four, so I'm going to round down. I get 0 0.0597, rounded to three significant digits.